Hello friends, welcome back to She's in Her Apron. Get your aprons ready because today I'm gonna to be sharing with you Great Depression Recipes. Years ago here on YouTube, I have found Clara's Kitchen. So the recipes we'll be making from Clara's cookbook is her Ma's Sunday bread, the poor man's dinner, egg drop soup, pasta and peas, and Ma's simple cake. Are you ready? Aprons on, let's go. So this is a for sure new way of making bread, not with a mixer, no KitchenAid, no Bosch, just a bowl and my hands. So this is going to be fun. So we're gonna add all nine cups into the bowl. Now this is going to make six loaves of bread. We have to dig a well in the middle. All right, that looks like a good well. Now that we have our well, we are going to add the yeast. So all six tablespoons, or teaspoons, I'm sorry. All six teaspoons in. One cup of that warm water. And the olive oil. That's a lot of olive oil, but I am going to trust this, right? She knows what she's doing. They said, you know, you could break up the yeast with your hands. Oh, with my hands. I was gonna grab a spoon. Okay, we're just gonna do this. Just get in there, you know, manja. She's Italian. Maybe that's why I'm drawn to her. She reminds me so much of my grandmother. So just get in there and work it a little. Okay, so I broke it up with my hands and it says just to let it melt into the mixture. And then we're going to now incorporate this with the flour. Okay, I'm about to mix this, but I wanna get my salt ready because we're gonna gradually add that in. So one and a half tablespoons of that salt. Definitely can't forget salt in bread. I've done that once and ooh, does not turn out good. Okay, that is ready to go. So let's start mixing. I'm pulling in from the sides. Okay, I'm gonna slowly just start adding some salt. We are just so used to our mixers, you know. She says, um, with your hands knead together, add more water as you go to make the mass more doughy. But in all, you're adding three and a half cups of warm water. This is so fun. <laughs> nervous as I'll get out but this is so fun oh maybe I shouldn't have used my left hand too right <laughs> I am flicking dough around my kitchen on my hands you guys <laughs> oh I love this smell so good just put the rest of the salt in water this is, this takes strength. Maybe I'm using the wrong bowl because it keeps moving, but man, this takes muscles. I watched a lot of bread making classes on my break and um, from YouTube during January and man, they make it look so easy, but it just, it's skill, it's trial and error, right? You just gotta do it. That's what I learned. You just gotta do it. Should take, it says, 20 minutes of continuous kneading. I hope this turns out because I really need some bread. <laughs> when the dough becomes springy in texture, cover the bowl. Yeah, that's springy, okay. Okay, it's gonna sit here over by my KitchenAid that I did not use. <laughs> and we're gonna cover this with the cheesecloth and then let it sit here for one and a half hours. Can you see how that has risen in that bowl? <gasps> All right, it is time to prepare this bread. Here are the bread pans that I am using. There are six, and I will try to find a link for both of these for you. I did spray my pans with um, some avocado spray. They're ready to go for the loaves. Wow, look at that. Wow. What we're gonna do is punch this down and set it on the counter, and we're gonna form into six loaves. I'm gonna divide this. Okay, she really doesn't go into the kneading and like forming a perfect loaf. She said just get it in the pan and flatten it down. 
So I'm just gonna do a little. <laughs> but, okay, I'm gonna flatten this. 15 to 30 minutes, it'll rise again. So I'm gonna hurry and get these all in their pans. So in Clara's Kitchen's cookbook, she says about the bread that probably the only thing we ever had that was new or fresh was the fresh bread my mother would bake for us twice a week. Otherwise, everything was salvaged, repurposed, and reused. But every week, my mother would make six loaves of bread. And every week, we went through it, especially during the Great Depression. We didn't really eat breakfast back then, not like people these days. We'd pretty much have coffee with evaporated milk and a slice of Ma's bread. Bread may not be simple to make, but it's cheap and it's filling. And we made sandwiches all the time. Okay, we're gonna just cover this with a towel and it's going to rise for 15 to 30 minutes and then we'll get them in the oven. Okay, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 450 degrees. Okay, they've been going for almost 30 minutes and then she says that you can put a little slit on the top of these I'm guessing like this and then we're gonna get these in the oven for 40 to 45 minutes so in my oven I have a shallow pan of water and she says that this helps the bread so we're gonna get this in there try to get them all in Will they all be cooked evenly? I don't know, we'll find out. So 40 to 45 minutes, they go. They are done. I let them go for about 40-ish minutes. Oh yeah, they're done. So, so she says to let them cool on a rack in their pan for a little while and then take them out to cool. So I'm gonna do as she says. They're pretty hard and they're definitely done. They don't need any more cooking. So there's the bottoms, but she says to let them cool in the rack for 30 minutes and then out, or 15 minutes and then out. These got cooked really good. Dang. Should have kept her eye, but that is that. I'm wondering if it helps them moisten up as they cool, if it creates like a moisture. I don't know, but we're gonna do as we're told. And then after the 30 minutes, we'll take them out and let them cool on the rack by themselves. And we'll see, hopefully I didn't create like a brick. Hopefully it is edible. All right, let's check out this bread. It's pretty hard. My oven, maybe not, don't cook it as long. I don't know. I'm just gonna cut into this. in there. Wow, that is nice and soft and the outside's nice and crunchy. Ooh. Okay, gonna give this a try. All right, that one has the butter on it. It is so good. Definitely a basic bread. But when you're in need of bread, there you go, boom. Especially if you don't have eggs. Not all bread recipes call for eggs, but this is good. Okay, next up is the poor man's meal. This is super popular on YouTube with her, and it looks really good. And this recipe serves four people, so definitely double where you need to. You will need four tablespoons of vegetable oil, but I don't have vegetable oil. We're gonna use some canola oil instead. Three large potatoes, one onion. She says sliced, but when I watched her video, it was diced up. I think I'm gonna do that because it'll just fit 
when you dice up and cube up your potatoes and your hot dogs. So your hot dogs, you're gonna need four slice into rounds. And then she says some water. If you run out of oil or don't have any oil, water is a great substitute to get the potatoes from sticking and adding moisture and helping it cook. Three tablespoons of tomato sauce. Now, I went to go grab just a small can of tomato sauce, but in her video, she does use like a spaghetti sauce. Um, and I'm thinking too because it has flavor. So maybe in the day if they had homemade spaghetti sauce, they used it or a can of tomato sauce but then you would need to add some seasonings, I'm sure. And then Pecorino Romano cheese. It's my favorite cheese. When I smell it and grate it and eat it, it brings me right back with my grandmother, who's also raised during the Great Depression. All right, let's start on the poor man's meal. Okay, we're gonna peel and dice up these potatoes. So in her cookbook for the poor man's meal, Clara says that her grandson, Mike, likes this recipe. His friends all like it, and they all come here for the poor man's meal. Even the neighborhood kids come over. Can we have the poor man's meal, they ask me. What's not to like? Potatoes, onions, hot dogs. Cheap and satisfying, that's the poor man's meal. We ate plenty of hot dogs because they were cheaper than other meats. Clara doesn't use a cutting board. She does everything with her hands. So if she was gonna do this, she would literally hold the potato in her hand and just go down, no cutting boards. That's how she grew up cooking and was raised. I think that is awesome. We're gonna add our olive oil in, four tablespoons. Turn this on medium heat, get that going. Okay, we're gonna add our onions and potatoes. We're gonna let the potatoes brown, okay? So we're gonna stir this occasionally. She doesn't say that she salt and peppers, but I think in the YouTube video she does occasionally, but be careful with your salt depending on your hot dogs. And while the potatoes and onions are doing their things, we will slice up these hot dogs. When the potatoes get brown and golden on the edges, we're gonna add those hot dogs. We're gonna let these simmer for three minutes or until they curl up, she says. We're gonna add some more of that water in. Okay, we're gonna add our tomato sauce in. Just let this heat through. It smells good. Hey, okay, it is done. Let's dish it up and hit it with some cheese. Okay, the cheese is on. Let's get a taste of everything together. Mmm, this was very good. This would make a great dinner, lunch, yum. Add some more seasonings, even better. But Clara, this is amazing. Very yummy. And that is the poor man's dinner. Okay, next is egg drop soup. We're gonna need one large potato cubed, one onion diced, one bay leaf dry, and then we're gonna crumble that, three tablespoons of olive oil, eight large eggs, salt and pepper, 
and of course pecorino romano cheese but if you don't have this you can use parmesan and this recipe serves four now let's make some egg drop soup from clara's cookbook she says we made a lot of things with eggs but unlike people today we never had them for breakfast we really didn't eat much at breakfast maybe just a slice of bread with butter and coffee my mother and my aunts would always make something simple this soup was very popular on those nights it's inexpensive nutritious and delicious with fresh bread we are going to take our four eggs and crack them in the bowl and then we're going to whisk these all together And then the other four eggs are set aside to use later in the soup. Okay, we're gonna whisk these up and then we'll set them aside. In a saucepan, we're gonna add our olive oil. And this is over medium heat. Then we're gonna add our onions and potatoes in. And then we're going to crumble that bay leaf. Okay, we're going to let this cook on the medium heat until the veg uh, all the veggies turn brown. Okay, then we're going to add some water in. And they said like halfway. So that's going to be the broth of the soup. That's probably about three cups of water. We're going to add some salt and pepper. We're going to get this water to boil, she says. We're going to see how well I could do this, because I've never done this before. Okay, my whisk eggs. When the water boils, pour in the whisk eggs. Okay. Take your last four eggs and carefully crack them into the pot without whisking them and try to keep them whole. Oh my gosh! It's like a challenge. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, and four. Add the pecorino cheese and stir. Oh, okay. Oh my. I'm gonna lower that heat just a little. I do not wanna, nope, we're gonna lower that. Come on, come on. Okay, we're gonna get that cheese in there. Oh yes. Doesn't say how much cheese, we're just doing it. Stir, oh, how do you stir and try to keep everything whole? Oh, this is interesting. Okay, I doubt that those big eggs are now whole. Um, okay, turn off heat and keep the pot covered to finish cooking until you are ready to eat. Each person should have a whole egg when you serve the soup. Oh geez, your lips to God's ears. We will see, we will see. I don't know if I made this right. I've seen her make it before. This might not be exactly, but let's dish up and give it a taste. Now about that whole egg thing, I'm not seeing that in here. Well, kind of, yes, okay. Yes, I am. So these are the whisk eggs, which just get clumpy, but here is, here's one of those whole eggs. So I didn't kill them all. There's one right there. Let's pour this in. And then here's that whole egg. Oh my. Let's give it a taste. Okay, it is good, but it needs more salt. And I should have crushed up the bay leaf a lot finer. <laughs> FYI. Oh man. So take your bread, give it a little dunk. Yum, that is a great lunch or dinner. Next is pasta and peas, and this also serves four people. So you'll need two large potatoes cubed, one large yellow onion diced, three tablespoons of olive oil, two 15 ounce cans of peas, one pound of small shaped dry pasta, such as ditalini or mini shells, and I am using mini shells, salt and pepper, and optional is one fourth cup of tomato sauce, and pecorino romano cheese. Again, use any cheese or Parmesan. Okay, let's make some pasta and peas. 
to our pot, we're gonna add our, add our olive oil. And this is on medium high heat. We're gonna add our potatoes and onions in. We're gonna saute the onions and potatoes until they become soft and start to brown, about 10 minutes. Now we're opening up our cans of peas and make sure you wash the tops of your cans before you open them. Liquid and all, dump them into our pan with the potatoes and onions. We're gonna lower the heat now, add a cup of warm water, and then we're gonna bring this to a boil. As this starts to boil, I'm gonna add in some salt because we have that pasta. Okay, it's starting to boil, so I'm gonna add my pasta, but it doesn't seem like there's enough liquid for my pasta, but we're gonna do it where it's cold. Okay, we're gonna cook as long as the directions on the bag say. Interesting, how are these noodles gonna cook? I think the recipe had a typo. Okay, so I watched her video on this and she only added a cup of the pasta in. And in the cookbook, it says the one pound. So I'm gonna believe the video versus to what the cookbook says. So only add a cup of pasta in. So I added two more cups of hot water in to let this cook. I'm gonna add some more salt and pepper and let this pasta cook. And then we'll do the sauce and the cheese at the end. Okay, right when the pasta was like at a good spot, I took it off the heat, I covered it like it said. I'm gonna let it sit and cook on its own for a little bit, um, maybe like three minutes or so. And then we'll dish up, add some sauce and the cheese. This made a lot, obviously, right? So we're gonna put some in a bowl. And if you don't like peas, then this is gonna be a real bummer. And she likes to add a little bit of sauce. Pecorino Romano cheese, get that in there. Let's give this a little mix, because I'm sure we're gonna want that tomato flavor in it. Okay, let's take a little bite. We have the peas, the potatoes, the pasta, the sauce, and the cheese. All right, let's give it a taste. That's actually not bad. <laughs> I thought it'd be super bland, but it's really kind of shockingly not bad. Thank goodness with the tomato sauce and the cheese. Affordable meal that will feed your bellies when you're hungry. Good news, friends. My youngest is scarfing it up. <laughs> so, so far, all these recipes have been a hit with them. Okay, you may finish. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for Ma's simple cake. You'll need one stick of butter, one half cup of sugar, one large egg, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, three fourths cup all-purpose flour, three fourths teaspoon of baking powder, one fourth cup of milk, and at the end we're gonna hit it with a fourth a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a half teaspoon of powdered sugar. Okay, let's have dessert. You're going to grease a bread pan. We're gonna use the same one that we did the bread in earlier. Um, and I'm gonna use, instead of spray, because they didn't have that then, we're gonna use Crisco to shorten and um, coat this pan. Now she's pretty specific. She goes grease and flour a nine by five by two and three fourth inch bread pan. Uh, I don't know, we're gonna do this one. <laughs> so you're gonna coat this. Okay, nice and coated. And while you do that, preheat an oven at 350 degrees. In a bowl, we're gonna cream together the butter, the sugar, and then we're gonna hit it with some of the vanilla and the large egg. From Clara. No one ever celebrated your birthday back in the old days. Birthdays were nothing, not like they are today. We didn't have birthday cakes. Someone said, happy birthday, that was it. We went without a lot of things, but we were happy. Cakes for any occasion didn't really exist in our house during the depression. Ma would only make a simple cake if she had ingredients left over from another recipe. It was a nice treat. Ma had a recipe for simple cake and it holds up pretty well even today. It makes a small thin cake, but it's still delicious. 
Okay, in another bowl, we're gonna add our flour, three fourths teaspoon of baking powder. Okay, we're gonna give this a mix. Okay, then we're gonna slowly add the flour mixture to our sugar mixture, and we're gonna mix it well, and then we'll add the milk until it's nice and smooth. Okay, we're gonna pour the batter into the bread pan. Okay, we're gonna bake this in the 350 degree oven for 20 minutes. The cake is done when the top is golden, she says. We're gonna let it cool on a cooling rack, and then when it's like cool enough to touch, then we'll put it on a serving plate and powder it up. It pulled away from the sides on its own while it was cooling. Oh, dang it. <laughs> so now I put another plate over it and I'm gonna flip it upside down and see if it does the trick. Voila, there we go. It's very moist. I don't know if it needed to cook more, but I, the toothpick went all the way through. So I'm gonna sprinkle some powdered sugar on, and then we're gonna sprinkle some of the cinnamon on. And there is Ma's simple cake. Let's cut into it, dish it up. She did say it was thin, so there you go. Let's give this a taste. Oh, that's good. That light dusting of cinnamon is very good. So I can see how they serve this up and have it with your coffee or tea. Very good. So this is Ma's Simple Cake. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me. I love learning. I love learning how people did things back in the day, during war times, Great Depression, how they made it through, learning about how to make your food grow and stretch, how to make a meal stretch. So this was right up my alley. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you would like me to share more on Great Depression cooking or making food stretch and being able to get affordable meals on the table, let me know in the comments. And check out this playlist and video here to keep you motivated to cook for your family. Thank you so much for joining me and we will see you soon. Bye.